Hi, this is uh, Chris Slade. Uh, I've worked with ACDC. I'm currently working with my band, the Chris Slade Timeline. And you are listening to and watching Linear Rock. Or, as they say in the trade, Linear Rock! Hi Chris. Hello. Welcome to Italy. Thank you. And Very welcome nice. to Linea Rock, of course. Great to have you here, finally. Great to be here. <laughs> so 50 years as a professional drummer. Longer actually. Uh, even longer, it's maybe almost 55 yeah. or something like that. Okay, but do you remember the precise moment? I when, don't remember anything. When you, <laughs> when you decided you, know, you wanted to become a musician and why the drums? Yes, um, specifically, I think I was about 10 or 11 years old and my um, brother had a drum, a, a side drum, Okay. which uh, my older brother, he's eight years older than me, um, and he used to bring the drum home to uh, clean. And... Uh, of course, I got to clean it, not him. So, for cleaning his drum, he taught me a few drum patterns, okay. a few licks. Um, and it went from there, really. And then I heard a record which incorporated drums in a big way. Uh, and it was Sandy Nelson. Okay. and let there be drums. All right. Uh, that was a sign. Let there be drums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was a great record. It, was, uh, it influenced so many drummers of mm -hmm. my age and even younger than me. Uh, actually, I met Sandy just a few years ago in um, uh, just outside Las Vegas. He lives there. I was living there at the time. Um, and can you remember the Boulder City? Boulder City. Okay. So he lives still, as far as I know, lives in Boulder City. He had a terrible uh, motorcycle accident, oh. and uh, it's very difficult for him to walk, and he's quite frail. But uh, still going and still banging drums and telling stories okay. in the local bar. So let there be drums started me off all right what was that okay <clears throat> so you're on tour with the chris slade timeline uh, -huh. uh how is the show and you know it runs through your whole career how, and how this started and which are the plans actually is just to tour or uh, you want to record something at some point yeah um we are we have recorded um we have our whole set recorded okay. in a studio, not not live. Mm -hmm. We've done it properly in the recording studio. In fact, we go there next week to do some more. Okay. Uh, but we have everything now, just about uh, like three hours of music. Wow. Um, and we have a CD right now. We will have another one very soon. Uh huh. But our project right now is to record original material. So we have three songs. They'll be finished by, by the end of the month. So we have three original songs. I wrote two of them. Uh -huh. And uh, Steve the singer and the rest of the guys, rest of us, wrote uh, the other one. And it's quite surprising. People, I think, would be very surprised by it. Um, so you have uh, a label already, or it's no, got, it's no, no, self, uh, we self just want to get them mixed, okay. and then start looking around for outlets okay. or whatever it would be. But at worst, we'll sell them at the gig, all right, as originals. So uh, yeah, the project is 
we've probably been together now about seven years timeline uh, and there was this band in between that sort of got in the way uh, what were they oh ACDC uh, came in the middle for two years yeah. rock or bust right so um, I have some questions on that as well <laughs> of course I couldn't uh, we couldn't do timeline <laughs> yeah right point. So you've done uh, a lot of collaborations through your career. So Uriah Hip, Asia, The Firm with Jimmy Page, uh, David Gilmore, Michael Schenker, Gary Moore, Tom Jones in the 60s, Manfred Mann's Rare Hurt. Uh, but Earth you, Band. Yeah, Earth Band, right. But um, you are mainly known, of course, by the big audience as the ball drummer of ACDC and yeah. um, you were with them in a crucial moment of their career the Razor's Edge and Live at Donington days yep. and you were back as you already said for the Rock or Bus tour that was a highlight of course of your career because they, they're one of the biggest bands in the world still absolutely but maybe was it also like a heavy bag to carry, you know, during the rest of your career, having had, you know, such a collaboration. Is it a double-edged sword in some sense? Uh, yes, it can be. Um, and I've talked to other drummers as well. Uh, it can be double-edged in that it's fantastic to be in ACDC. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. 80,000 people a night, um, so much fun on stage, uh, and, and the audience just go, as you know, yeah. just go crazy, I mean crazy, crazy. Um, so it's, um, uh, it's a privilege to p play in that band. Um, the trouble with it, and I found it the last time, I left ACDC. Nobody calls you to work in their band. Oh, really? Yes. So that's where the double edge comes okay. in. Okay. Nobody actually says, uh, "Oh, Slade, um, I'm doing an album." Or Slade, I'm going out on the road. Do you want to come with me? And uh, nobody, but okay. nobody, calls. I don't know if it's because they're afraid, you know, that oh, you know, oh, he's. He's he charges, on he the charges too yeah. much. Now, you know, that's mainly the thing. <laughs> no, not that I'm like this. Is that they, uh, uh, oh, he'll want a fortune, you know? Yeah. So nobody ever calls. Even when I was, what was I, in my 50s, probably, early 50s. Yeah. Maybe I was even younger, I can't remember. I'll have to work it out chronologically. Um, but. And, uh, you know, I, I found uh, the same, um, other people have said the same thing, that uh, nobody ever calls, okay. you never get the wow. call. So, I, uh, when I was living in Cal California, I, used, I had a band there, it wasn't called Timeline, um, and that was with friends, uh, John uh, Karobi from uh, uh, was in the band. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, so it shows you the caliber of the band with uh, John Karabi. Mm -hmm. in it. Uh, great singer. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And a great guy. Yeah. yeah he's the yes. coolest man. <laughs> he's the coolest dude, man. <laughs> he really is. Jen. I was talking about him the other night in, in England. We did a gig in England. And I was talking to the the owner of that pub and he, Karabi, had been there and played an acoustic yeah. set. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, so yes, there's the double edge. Nobody ever called you. But you got the call back from the band, from ACDC. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you expect that? And no, that was completely and, and uh, Was it like the very first time or was very different? Uh, you mean uh, being you in know, the having, band? You know, having the call, you know, maybe the emotion, the thrill was the same or... Uh, yeah, well, funny <laughs> enough, I was working with Timeline in mm -hmm. Switzerland. Yeah. 
And uh, my phone is uh, an American phone. And I saw this New York number. I thought, okay. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> so, yeah, because what had happened, people kept saying to me, oh, have you had the call yet? Have you had the call? Have you had the call? I went, no, I haven't had the call. And they're not going to call me, mm. okay? So you weren't positive about it? Uh, mm. Absolutely. When, after the first few months went by, I thought, no, I'm not going to get a call now. Angus probably has a nephew who's, who plays, <laughs> plays drums or something. You yeah. know, no, that's a fact. You know? <laughs> um, and so I thought, no. So I was on the road with Timeline, I got this call, and it was like, wow. And um, it was the manager. And he said, uh, you know, uh, Chris, the guys would uh, like you to to uh, come back in. And even at the end of it, and this went on for like probably 10, 15 minutes. At the end of it, I said, has this come from the guys, from the band? And he went, of course it's come from the band. <laughs> I went, oh, well, okay then. <laughs> I'd already said yes, by the way. Okay. You know. But, uh, so, Double-edged, most definitely. Oh, okay. And also, the way I play, uh, I don't... Um, I play... I can play all sorts of styles. Uh, I don't just play the ACDC style. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, I play very diverse styles of drumming. From heavy rock to... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, even um, jazz rock, for instance. So I can. I'm very, very lucky that I can play so many different styles. Like from uh, Uriah Heep, ACDC, Tom Jones, you know? So you mean that uh, the main characteristic of your drumming is, you know, being also various and being able to the main fit you know the, the situation you know what the situation needs yeah it's like a chameleon okay you fit yeah your style to what the band wants and acdc is very specific you know it's yeah um but if you if you are at the show tonight you can see it goes right through from progressive rock to, you know, Tom Jones. Yeah. To doing a waltz time. Well, it's three, four, it's not quite a waltz. But you'll see what I mean if ever you so see the show. So being such a versatile drummer, was it in a sense difficult to, you know, play ACDC since you need, you know, to do certain things and you have to do that? and not yeah. much more. You have to stick to the script. I oh, am. Yeah. Uh, with Timeline, if I play ACDC, I often go off piste. Okay. <laughs> and uh, just do whatever I feel like doing, which you cannot and must not do in ACDC. Yeah. For one, the band don't want it and the crowd don't want it. <laughs> so it'll be crazy, you know me to even consider and that might be another thing with the double edge people go oh he just does ACDC you know? yeah he can't play my stuff right you know but there's tonight we're doing a uh, a song from Asia I was in Asia yeah. for like seven years off and on yeah and we do a uh, an eight minute maybe even longer song called free yeah and that is so prog rock, it's out there. Time signatures and all over the place sometimes. <laughs> no, all over the place musically, I mean, in a nice way. Um, and about, so, about ACDC, do you feel closer to Phil's drumming or Simon's drumming? Which is the one that maybe in the spirit and also in the style you feel much more closer to? Um, I don't think about it. I, okay. I do what I'm told. But I'd do that if I was working with Frank Zappa. I would do what Frank said, you know? 
So also when you recorded the razor's edge, you had complete freedom. I mean, staying in the standard to do whatever drum pattern no, no. you wanted, or no, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Angus and Malcolm do the demos first. Uh huh. You copy the demos. Okay. Whether you're Phil Rudd or Simon or me, you do the drumming that either Malcolm or Angus did. Okay. And you follow it like that. So you mean with the drum machine they do the demos or? Uh... No, they play. Uh, oh, really? Yes, yes. I didn't know about that. Yeah. That's weird. They okay. both played, okay. play, play drums with Malcolm, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, live drums. Yes. So, and you have to follow. Okay. Yeah. About Thunderstruck. They write the song around the drum patterns. Also, Thunderstruck was done like that because that, you know, yes. it's a very distinctive song and it's one of the main hits ACDC ever had. So, di did you actually realize that that was such a, a strong song when, while uh, you recorded it? They were, I mean, I've got to say, all ACDC songs <laughs> are strong. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. We all know that. It's yeah. a fact of life. Um, no, I, did I think it was going to be as big? I'm, I don't think Ang Angus and Malcolm thought it was going to be as big yeah. as it was. Um, so, no, I had no idea. Um, you know, you think, oh, this is, you know, this is good. Sometimes with songs. Yeah. What I really liked on that Razor's Edge album was um, uh, Rock Your Heart Out. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed playing that. But that drum pattern is either Angus or Malcolm. It's not, I didn't invent that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was so difficult to learn because I had to learn it in 10 minutes at oh, the wow. audition. Oh, wow. <laughs> at the audition, because it's all syncopated, all offbeat bass drum. Da 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 and I had to learn that perfectly in about 10 minutes, wow. maybe 12. So, um, difficult. Yeah. That was extremely difficult. Wow. In fact, when I did the audition, I thought I did so badly. So Dick Jones, the drum tech, helped me to pack the drums up and I put them in the back of my car. Because I, I lived only an hour away from the rehearsal place. Okay, so... And people were coming from all over the world. All right. All over the world in big bands. You can't imagine. You think of a top drummer. Yeah. If they he was auditioned. The... Oh, yeah. I was number 100. Wow. Yes. Of top, top players. Uh, hey, guys, uh, don't, don't tell my band, okay? But I'd really like to try out with you. All right. Fact. I promise you. Absolute fact. But so, you got the gig. I was, so. I was kicking myself, going, <laughs> why did you say that? Why did you play that like that? Why mm. did you, you know, oh, you're an idiot. You're just, you know, you're an idiot. You're just <laughs> stupid. And I, I was so doing this so much that I lost my way. I lived an hour away. I'm, oh, my oh, God. Where am I? <laughs> Because you were overthinking, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, middle of the countryside, <laughs> I, you know. So I, I went and I called my wife and said, uh, look, I got lost and uh, I'll be home in half an hour. Because, of course, no sat-navs in those days. No mobile phones. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so I had to find a phone box. <laughs> and it's like, uh, so... Um, I said, oh, you know, the, how, oh, of course, she says, how did you do? I said, really bad, <laughs> really, really bad. Uh, I'll tell you all about it when I... Well, you must have had the wrong perception since you got the gig, <laughs> so... <laughs> so, she walked up the path and I said, uh, come on, let's go to the pub because did really bad. She said, oh, they just called to say you've got the gig. <laughs> That's fantastic. They called yeah. before I got home. Yeah. So. Wow. So That's a great we, story. We still went to the pub. <laughs> for different, 
Brittany for a reason. Yeah, okay. So, how is the situation in ACDC right now? I mean, you're still in the band, you're not, because the news, you know, are really confusing and there are no official statements about it. There never so, is. Okay. That's so, the way they are. Okay, so so you you don't even know if you're still in the band or not, or, or you cannot uh, tell. I've, I've had I've had no indication okay. that I'm not. Okay, that's a good the point. The rumors are completely, all right. You know, but ACDC, as you probably know, have always taken five years between anything. Yeah. And then suddenly you get a oh Florida next week, <laughs> you know, LA, ten days time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay. Wow. Well, that's the way they've always been that way. And which was your real, you know, body in the band? Your oh, great, buddy? yeah. All oh, right. Um, well, Angus doesn't drink mm -hmm. at all. Hardly ever has. I think when he was eleven, when he got drunk, and that was the end of it. Um, so, I think uh, Cliff and Brian. We used to occasionally go out for. Um, for the odd drink, it wasn't like us getting down yeah. our throats, nothing like that. But um, uh, we probably hang out more than more than most. All oh, right. Yeah. And another story, very interesting story about you. Is it true that you initially said no to Jimmy Page for the firm? and that you made him wait for you for a, a while? It wasn't since anything, what, okay. it wasn't anything what? to do with me. Okay, that's the <clears> real So story. the story is, I'll cut it as short as I possibly can. Uh, I was living in London and phone rings. And I'm trying to get it round the right way. So, hello? Uh, and who was it? Oh, hello, <laughs> uh, hello, uh, this is David Gilmore, mm -hmm. come on Jim, <laughs> I know it's you, stop messing about, no, this is David Gilmore, um, and I had met him once before, I went, oh hello Dave, Ah, uh, surprising to hear from me. We had mutual friends in that um, Mick Ralphs from Bad Company. Yep. They were neighbours and I'd worked in the Mick Ralphs band. Just did a few gigs to try to warm up and stuff. So I had met Dave. Uh, but as far as I knew, he was off skiing somewhere. Um, so, surprised to hear from you, yeah. Well, uh, I'm putting a, a band together and i uh, really like you to uh, be the drummer. And I went, oh Dave, yeah. Look, you know I'm in the band with Mick Rouse and it's be a bit awkward. And he goes, oh no, Mick's doing it as well. <laughs> doing the band, you know. So, <laughs> so, funny enough, went down the pub to celebrate. Basically, <laughs> oh, the tour is in like a few months, so we'll get together and rehearse. I'll let you know all the details. Oh, great! Great to see, I'll see you again. So down the pub, celebrate. <laughs> Come back from the pub. Uh, only a few pints and lunch, and uh, ring, ring. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> um. Hello, Chris, it's Jimmy Page, yeah? <laughs> Jim, now I know it's you this time. <laughs> Again. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no it really is Jimmy Page. Huh? <laughs> Hello, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm putting, I'm putting a band together with Paul Rogers and we'd really like you to play drums. And I went, Jim, you won't believe this. Like, hour and a half ago, I committed to David Gilmore tour yeah. for the whole, you know, for like six wow. months. <laughs> and he goes, that's all right, we'll wait. Wow. That's all right. 
Uh, just keep us in, just keep us in the loop and let us And go. did you believe him right over? I mean, he was gonna wait for it or that it was yeah. just polite, you know, just... Well, it was like a um, done deal, you know. <laughs> Uh, Jim, no, you don't really want to wait for me, do you? You know, why don't you go and get, um, no, just like, <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Jim, that's... Did he tell you why he wanted you? No, no, it so, might have been... Because uh, he wanted you so bad. It so. might have been the quarter of a million I gave him. <laughs> okay, but... That, I, I'm sure it didn't, <laughs> it didn't change, you know, change right. his judgment on that. No, um... I came highly recommended, apparently, mm -hmm. and we had, again, we had mutual friends. I'd never met him before, but we had mutual friends, um, and mutual crew, actually, as well. So, crew do a lot yeah. um, in putting things together. Right. Um, so that was the wait. It wasn't me that okay. said, no, Jim, no, okay, okay, uh, sorry. So it was said, another wait. commitment. So okay. it started off, I think, I think it was a three-month tour, ended up, it, then it was a six-month tour, then it was nine months, and they waited wow. all that time, Wow. Jim and Paul. So. And I was, I was amazed, I mean... <laughs> that, that was worth the wait? That day, <laughs> it's like, I can't remember the date right now, mm -hmm. but good grief, what... Uh, what a red letter day that was. <laughs> well, how, how was working with Jimmy Page? He's, it was great. He's, uh, he's an extraordinary musician, you know, and he's, he's very... His magic is particular, special. Yeah, um, I would Is agree it with that. hard also, hard to work with him? Not at know. all. He's the nicest guy. Okay. He so. really is. He's... Uh, He's, is he demanding? He's very humble, uh -huh. believe it or not. <laughs> Extremely humble. Okay. Um, and not demanding at all. Okay. No. Not at all. Not one bit. Um, not even suggest, oh, can you play that there, you know? Uh -huh. Nothing like that. Nothing. He just lets it flow, come out. Which was the most demanding musician you worked with? Oh, I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> okay, okay, you don't want to say that, okay. Uh, I still like to keep working, you know. <laughs> All right, okay. So, uh, since, uh, you know, you, you've done really a lot of things, what's the biggest sacrifice, you know, to have a career like yours? You know, being such a hard man at work, in rock and roll, and not only rock and roll. Well, it's a work ethic. Um, you either got it or you haven't got it. I love being on the road for a start. That's my forte. Mm -hmm. uh, I love traveling. I love meeting people. I love going from town to town. I prefer being on the road to be sitting at home. Oh. Um, but it's not just that. I can't believe some people, some musicians these days go, oh, I hate the road. I, I understand that, by the way, because it's so demanding. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do this. I don't want to uh, play here, you know. I hate my band mates, you know, <laughs> and some do, of course. We all know those stories, um, but I've always been able to get on with people and try to find a middle way, yeah. which is very zen actually. Right. I, I, I used to be a very zen man, meditation and all that. Oh wow. Brown rice and, oh yeah, right through the 70s. I, uh, I didn't drink at all, nothing. Uh, uh, brown rice and vegetables, microbiotic, which I used to cook myself and meditate twice a day, 45 oh, wow. minutes each time. So, um, and that helps also being a so being solid on, drummer. Because still being on the road, uh -huh. by the way, and bicycling and doing martial arts yeah. at the same time. And I was so fit, it was unbelievable. 
Um, but some people, they don't have a professional attitude, which I find incredible. You either do the gig or you don't do the gig. It's not like there shouldn't be a halfway. Yeah. It's like this is your gig, this is your band, do the job. Stop complaining or whatever, you know? And do it to the yeah. best of your ability. Now, if they don't think so, then that's the consequence of your attitude. Right. But, you know, that does happen. So, I've always been professional, always turned up on time, sober, yeah. <laughs> which is important, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and prepared. And um, I just, uh, that's the way I approach things, all things. And being back in ACDC, what just felt, you know, just if, if, like, you know, even if, if time didn't pass by for you, sitting, you know, on that throne back again, it was like, you know, time didn't pass by, or, or uh, and yeah. the family feeling was still there, or? Yeah, no, I had a great time. Yeah. Um, and did you remember all the songs? Yeah, after, yes, of course. Oh, wow. Well, I'd been playing them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I'd, I'd had Timeline and I had my California band. So, so I was playing. I never stopped playing ACDC. So, so of course I remember them. I, I played them last Wednesday, you know. Do you know any jokes about drummers? I don't that... do jokes. Okay, <laughs> so you don't. Just, All right. Uh, <laughs> Jokes. That's the funny stories you tell, isn't it? Yeah. Jokes. Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> we pass on that. All right. Last question. So, is there any goal you still have? Something that you really damn want to accomplish still? Uh, I just want to keep playing drums until they put me in that box. Oh, or wow. flight case. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. I want to be able to play as long as I can. I saw Louis Belson, who was an old jazz drummer, and he was, just before he died, I think, uh, you can look it up, but I think he was in his early 80s, maybe mid 80s. He was still playing. Yeah. And I went to a special thing at the NAMM show in California. Um, it's on every January, and he was always there. And he played with a big band, and it was Louis Belson playing drums. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a much more subtle, much... I started with big band, by the way. Uh -huh. So, you know, I started with doing Buddy Rich stuff, right? I learned it first, and then I got mixed up in the whole big band issue. Wow. Uh, jazz music, Kung Basie, Duke Ellington, in fact, with Tom Jones. Wow. We did a tour with the Count Basie band, with me playing drums, which was like, wow, it's Tom Jones. Or as we used to know him, Tom. And there's this legend, Count Basie, yeah. playing piano, just there. It's like, <laughs> unbelievable. I knew Tom, and you know, he's, again, he went to school with my brother, so it's eight years difference. And it's like, Tom is Tom, you yeah, know, <laughs> of course. who's now a legend. One in a million. But this was, <laughs> this was Count Basie. Yeah. Like, I can't believe it. And Dizzy Gillespie, yeah. who was a trumpet player, used to right. blow his cheeks up like that, offered me a gig. Uh, we were in Madison Square Gardens. We did it for a week with Tom. And, uh, and Count Basie and Dizzy Gillespie offered me a job and I said, man, I'm, we've got to leave in two days, leave New York. <laughs> and he went, oh, well, well, you know, shame. But he liked my playing enough to, to recognize that I might be able to play his stuff. Yeah. What a fantastic life, you know, and career you had. It was an honor for me to talk to you. Thanks for your time Thank and you. for the great quotes. I enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.